Well, hello everybody. Welcome to another video with Leanne Graff. Tonight it's Stamp With Me Live. And we are going to make a split front card. So let's see where my measurements are. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> okay, I printed these up. So if you want to take a screenshot, you have it. Although the template is really what you want to take a screenshot of. So let me know who is um, watching today. Hi, Jaquel, welcome from Fargo, North Dakota. Awesome. Um, who else is gonna join it? Are you stamping tonight, Jaquel, or are you gonna do it later or just watch tonight? So when I do these Stamp With Me Lives, I post on my Facebook group or page, I should say, um, Flower Bugs Ink Spot and um, two days ahead of time usually. So hi Brenda. Um, so what I do is I post the cards and quick tips on cutting or measurements. So you can do this ahead of time, have your pieces ready, at least most of them, and then you can join right along with me while I'm stamping. So <laughs> don't rush around. Yeah, you gotta watch. Okay, awesome. Okay, you're stamping, wonderful. So I'm using the uh, Beauty From The Earth designer paper. I should have a sample of that, shouldn't I? Just a second, let me see if I can grab it real quick. Okay, let's see. So you can see all the designs in this one. It could be classified as fall paper. There's a lot of fall colors in it but there's also some pretty blues, greens, browns um, that could not be fall. So here's a, a pretty, just a foliage one. So there's a lot of beautiful patterns that um, matches one of the suites in the catalog. So that's what I'm using tonight. All right, so watching. All right, so welcome everybody. And thanks for um, saying hello on the comments. I appreciate that, knowing who is watching. All right, so let's get out the template. So if you are cutting, this is kind of an interesting thing here. Let's see, that one goes here. So this starts out as a four inch by five and a quarter piece, which is standard first layer for an A2 size card. So you start out with four by five and a quarter, and I'm gonna cut this right in front of you. I'm gonna cut one of my pieces. So I've got a whisper white one here. Move the cards away. Get my paper trimmer out. So what I recommend is to make this template, make your little marks, make a mark at three quarters of an inch down on your template. Now remember this is full four inches by five and a quarter, so measure three quarters, make a little dot with a pencil. Then from the bottom, from over here, this is the bottom uh, left corner, <laughs> um, make a mark at two and a half, so somewhere about over here, and then you're going to um, cut that piece. So at three quarters of an inch, at two and a half. So this is your first piece of your template. Okay, now on your template, you also will make a mark three and three quarters of an inch down. Okay, awesome, Linda, I'm glad you're doing it with me. Um, so that, from that court point there, you make a cut and cut that piece off. So that leaves you with this as the center piece. As you can see on this one right here, that is, and this one here, that's the center. So what I planned on doing and what worked out really well was to have one piece of, of cardstock to make two cards here and one piece of designer paper. So that leaves you, let's see if I can figure this out here. There we go, there and here. So when I cut the next piece, which I'm gonna do right now, I will end up with this. Well, you'll see. So what I, what I like to do to make it easier, why make more lines and pencil marks on this? Why not just use your template? So this is what I recommend. Put it on there. If it, if it doesn't match up, trim it to match. Hopefully your measuring is pretty good. And then just find the groove, like mine is, right here in this little space right here and then right there and if it's not absolutely perfect you can you can fix it afterwards so now i'm going to take my cutting blade which i think is this one and then trim 
Okay, so that's that piece. Now I'm going to take this one and match it up. Make sure it's really snug in there. And you could put a little repositionable adhesive if you want to or post-it note. Washi tape would be a good thing to do if you struggle with keeping things um, secure. So I can see already that moved a little bit. I should have some washi or something here. But I'm pretty good at eyeballing. And then if it isn't perfect afterwards, I am okay with just trimming and fixing. So I don't see any white on these edges, excess white, that's pretty good. I really shouldn't start out at a point because you can dull that tip. So I'm gonna start out down here and then trim that. Let's see how, how good I did. Yeah, my tip is pretty, pretty straight there, a little bit off. But okay, so now save this template. Save this and put it in a baggie or something so you can use it over and over for these split front cards. Thanks, I'm glad you like it, Joyce, awesome. Okay, so we're done cutting. How easy was that, right? Once you have this template, you can use it over and over and over. So there you go for, while well, I'm working here, hopefully you can see that. That's the measurements right here, makes sense with the template. And I'll be posting this on my blog. I think I have it scheduled to post on Thursday. So if you're not familiar with my blog, it's Flower Bugs Ink Spot. And that is uh, my blog post. All right, so here is my uh, Misty Moonlight, eight and a half by 11. And I thought I'd just share with you how I do my cards. So I always do a score line first. So there's the five and a half inch mark and just do a score line. And then I can cut my um, two pieces at one time. And I do this no matter whether I'm using both card pieces or not because I just stick the other one in my oh I want the cutting line now cutting in my my group of cardstock so then I have this one if I'm only making one card this is ready to go so I almost always score first whether it's um, across here or across here I always have then a card base ready to go okay so I'll use a bone folder on here and start Putting our pieces together so it looks like this one is going to make the white and my center piece for this is right here isn't that beautiful okay so I know I want to do first I'm making this card right here and yours you're, this is the right way for you but this I can't work upside down at least I can't stamp greetings very well upside down thanks for sharing I appreciate that thank you Okay, so I want to do my greetings first. I want to do the little hey friend. Now where I got um, these greetings on these cards is from the in symmetry. I like the greetings, even though the stamps are great too, the images, I really like the greetings and the font in here. So I'm, that's what I'm using today. And Misty Moonlight ink. So I'm going to stamp my greeting on the bottom. I have a, some cute die cuts and I'm going to show you those in a minute. So just make sure I can almost see a little fuzz there on there. I tend to have to look. Oh, I still see it. Hold on a second. Sorry. Just, I tend to have a lot of little kitty hairs because my cats love to join me as I stamp. Okay, there's that one. And that's all the stamping on that card. You know, while I'm stamping, I might as well. Let's see, this is the bottom of this. No, that's the top. Hold on. Okay, that's this one. I need to find, okay. All right. So <laughs> I just need to see. And then the other important thing is to see which way. Oh, let's go like this. Let's just make double sure. I stamp in the right place. Okay, so this one's going to be, thanks so much. I just want to be sure I'm stamping in the right direction, right? Okay. Oh, I do see a little fuzz on there. Oh boy, this one has a lot of fuzzes. Sorry about that. And I did forgot to bring my chamois by me, so I can't clean it. So I'm just rubbing it out, and I can still see you know, does anybody else have to take their glasses off to see the close-up? It's crazy. 
I used to tease my boss, just get better glasses. And <laughs> she would say, it doesn't work that way. And I'm like, okay, I get it now, I get it. <laughs> you get to an age and the bifocals and whatever just doesn't happen easily. Okay, hopefully I don't have a fuzz here. Okay, now it looks good. All right, so stamping is done. Get the ink out of the way. All right, so that's that card. This is the other card. So it's really neat how you can get two cards from one on, on this template. So what I want to do here, make sure it's the right way, is I'm going to run this through an embossing folder. I don't know if you can see this. But I did texture this after I stamped, and it adds a lot of really fine detail. Can you see that at all? It, um, it's called the Timber um, 3D Embossing Folder, and I'm going to use a different one on this card. So I'm going to just scoot some of these over here and bring in my Big Shot. I shouldn't call it a Big Shot, should I? It's the Stampin' Die Cut and Emboss Machine. Oh boy, someday I'll get used to it. We've had the Big Shot for so many years, and now they switched on us. I just want to kind of get it running the same direction. This one is called Time Worn Type. Okay, so just get it in on there on my platform. And this is a 3D folder, so I'm using the, the specialty plate, which is kind of like if you ever bought our blue or purple one with, um, with the Big Shot. You know, all our layers are the same as they were with the Big Shot. This machine right here works with everything, including the magnetic platform that you have in the past. So no worries about getting things um, different or new for this machine. Okay, all right, so back here. How to assemble this now? You have to kind of see how it fits together first. Oops, you want everything down at the bottom at the base to be even. And what helps is to have these, um, these pieces a little bit overlapping or have something up here that's gonna cover any discrepancies in your cutting. So you have to kind of decide which, what you're putting down first. And I usually start with either the top or the bottom. Okay, and then layer that evenly. Then, you can test this to see how well it is. And if it isn't even, you could overlap a little bit on either one of these next pieces. It's not a big deal if you overlap. They can't, people can't tell. And I want this straight so I can see that this one's gonna have to come down a little bit. And that's the beauty of adding the embellishments or the die cuts up there is that you can straighten things out that way. I think I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna put this one on first. And if it doesn't match up perfectly, just trim your card a little bit. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure it's even here on the side. And before it dries, because this glue is a little forgiving, I just want to double check. Yeah, that's pretty good. Could be over here just a little bit. See if I can slide that just a hair. Okay, now I can add glue where the empty spot is. Yeah, a little bit into that tip. Okay, all right, so pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna move this template out of the way for now. Are you, bl is it blurry, Jewel? I'm sorry, I don't know why it would be blurry. Hmm, is it blurry for anybody else? Let me know. Okay, so here's the card we're doing. And so the dies that I'm using today are called, this one is called the Iconic Dies. And it's a set, it's a, a, a loan. It's not with any bundle at all. Okay, I'm glad it's not blurry for you, Marty. Maybe your um, internet is a little slow or something. Okay, sorry, Jewel. You might be, you might be alone. Your internet's such a funny thing. And I know in the evening it can be a prime time for TV watchers, and that tends to, I believe, at least that's what my husband says when our TV doesn't come in well. 
<laughs> he, he blames it on all the other people that are watching TV or YouTube. So yeah, these are called the iconic dyes and there's a ton of variety between mushrooms and leaves, birds, flowers, branches, bees, fern, lots of different variety in here. I've only touched the surface of a few of these so far. The other one, well, that's what I'm using on this one. We'll just keep it at that for this one. And I did, of course, die cut most things ahead of time and hopefully it's not all um, discombobulated here. Okay, all right. So to put these on here, I'm gonna bring out my silicone um, mat and just start adding a little bit of adhesive. And my tip for adhesive, for those of you who do not like it, if you get too much, is to use so little, you can hardly see it, and to spread it with the tip. Don't have dots, honestly. If you have such fine pieces like this, don't have dots, but just use some spreading uh, bits, and then you won't have much squeeze out. And some people would swear by a tweezers. So you can always do that too. I'm gonna have the bird on mostly on the white here, okay? that and the branches let's see you know there's a right and a wrong side to dies the wrong side is a little bit rougher if your plates are rough I should say but it usually has kind of an edge that reveals more of a cut line if you um, if you do it that way so let's see if I can do this upside down not sure which one to do first Guess I'll do this one kind of trying to copy what I did here. And yes, you still, oh, I dropped it, you still get gluey fingers. No matter what, I guess if I wasn't, was using a tweezer, I probably wouldn't get gluey fingers, but it brushes off, it's not the big deal. I just really like the hold and a little bit of a sliding, I call it a sliding time, adjusting time that you have when you use this glue. one's going to be up a little higher. I'm going to trim off the excess. Cute branches, aren't they? So I'll turn it over and just trim off the excess on the other side. Okay, that's it. And then I'm going to add some sequins. Now we have, this is another sneak peek from the holiday catalog as along with that time worn and the timber embossing folder. This, these are called subtle shimmer sequins. And they're a mix of a soft white and silver. So I'm not gonna do it all, I'm just gonna do a few, but this is what I tend to do when I do um, sequins. I just, I'll do an that's enough for me. <laughs> I don't wanna be putting sequins on here all night. Okay, we'll use the take your pick tool with the little putty end and just pick one up and add it. And that's all there is to it. This um, take your pick tool can make this so much easier than it might have been. Oh, let's see, we'll put one up here. I do wanna, because my fingers are sticky. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'll put this one here. Oh, yeah, my finger. Okay, I need two more. I'd like to have another little one. Boy, that's a little one, all right. And maybe another little one. Oh, come on out there. There we go. Okay, so that's my recommendation when you're doing sequins. Oh, that one's upside down. Is to put the dots of glue or anything small. Put the dots of glue on your object and then drop your tiny thing, whether it's tiny punched flowers or whatever, then add it that way. Always don't ever try and put a gluey uh, sequins <laughs> on your card, sequin. That just makes life uh, not pleasant. Okay, all right, so this one uses the artistic dies. And these are on, um, back order. I think you can can still get them, but that's where I got the, um, well, the feathers were from the iconic dies, of course. And so I have two feathers and some 
leaves that I die cut from Misty Moonlight. So once again, let's see how this one fits on here. Look at that side, isn't that pretty? I almost considered making one of these in the greens and the blues, but I had some of this um, these items cut out already, so I thought, oh, I'm just gonna stick with the blues. I really think it's so pretty. This uh, monochromatic card, um, they can be just so soothing, and oops, and you don't have to think too hard about matching colors. So if you're one of those people who struggles with color coordination, Try the mono monochromatic cards. You might, now before that dries too quickly, I wanna get that in there. Oh boy, almost a perfect fit. Okay, so yeah, you might just wanna to stick to single color or, well, adding white, of course, but it's really soothing on your eye and um, yeah, just easy. One color of ink. Okay, all right. How simple, right? Okay, now I'm gonna rub my glue off my fingers a little bit. Thanks, I'm glad you're here, everybody. I appreciate you tuning in. Okay, we're gonna trim off, I think it's just these leaves right here, these excess leaves. All right, so I really like how that's um, on there, and then we'll add the, the feathers on top. Okay, got a few little die cut pieces hanging around here I wanna get off. Sorry, let me move this over. I've got kind of a messy desk here, don't I? Okay. All right, so again, when you're adding this, um, just smears of glue. And on these leaves, I tend to just go down the center and that hits most areas. Um, to make it adhere. And then a little bit up on the stem, if you can see that or not, and I'm spreading that, or it's very fine. Really, honestly, you do not need a lot of this glue. It's like magic. Okay, more back to my gluey fingers. And I think I'll put it about like that. Okay. All right, and then the feathers. Okay, now one thing that can help you out if you don't like to glue, you can use, I have to find the right and the wrong side here, you can use our adhesive sheets and then you adhere those to your cardstock before you die cut and then you just peel off the backing. They, they can be like magic for people who do not like to futz with this. It is one more step when you're die cutting, but it is really neat to, um, to use. Okay, oh, there's my fingers again. I didn't wipe them off well yet. See, it, where it's blue, that is all glue. <laughs> you do like the sheets, Marty? Awesome, yeah, we used them for, hmm, what was it in club this month? Um, hmm. I can't quite remember what um, what we used, but yeah. Oh, I know, it was the pot, um, the macrame hanger. So that's what we used at club, and, and we just had to peel off that backing because it was die cut ahead of time. So, okay, so tip on the on bows, I have, um, I have the twine, oh gosh, uh, I think this was with the flowers for all season but it's not any longer. So it's, of course, that retired. But I, what I do when I do a double bow, because that one is a double bow. So I usually just fold it in half and I estimate about how much I will use and then trim. And I do this for ribbons too, but a lot of ribbons are too thick to do double bows. So I'm doing a, um, a, a bunny ear method. Okay, so you need to make a loop and then, and I know it's an upside down bunny ear for you, but I can't fix that. <laughs> you have the head and two ears, right? If you can see that. So one ear goes in the head. This is, how, this is my bunny ear method. And then you pull it and it looks awful, but you have to keep track of the knot here on your fingers and the stems or the ends. So pull, and this is the one, the loop. It could have been an end piece, but I just tend to leave it looped and then you just adjust. And you can pull individual or you can pull each one. And then just keep adjusting. You can pull, um, just hold on to your knot while you're pulling, okay? All right, so then I'm gonna cut.
cut that one. And cut these. Okay, and then to put it on, of course, the magic of, of adding ribbons and um, twine is to use a mini glue dot. Press it on that and just add it at the top and you have your cards. So I didn't add the sequins yet to this one, but that is basically how you do that. Okay, so adding the glue first and then the item that you're adding. So here are the, here's the template, there's the directions. So I'm going to be posting a, um, a let's share on my group and I'll share it on this video when I upload it, the link to it. So when you uh, make the, uh, these cards, just one card will do, it doesn't have to be two, although I'd love to see two. Um, you can post them and you can get in on the door prize drawing for some embellishments. So this will be on my Flowerbugs Ink Spot Facebook group. And just look for the Let's Share post and add a picture of your card so you can get in on door prizes. I'm trying to remember who won last week's door prize. I just posted it the other day, or the two weeks ago. So remember, the Let's Share videos are the second and fourth Monday at 7.30 p.m. of every month unless something else happens <laughs> to interfere with that. But thanks for watching and I appreciate um, you, what, you joining me and for those of you who are stamping and creating, I wanna see what you made. So share that. All right, and I have another Facebook Live tomorrow morning. We're gonna play with one of the bundles in the annual catalog and show some sneak peeks of the celebration and um, holiday, um, holiday catalog as well. All right. Thanks so much and take care. Have a great night. Bye-bye.